The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by Pure. The Pure app lets awesome people have casual sex tonight. Download Pure on Google Play or the App Store. Pure, the hookup app that says it's a hookup app. Today's show is sponsored by Talkspace, the online therapy company that believes therapy should be affordable, confidential, and convenient. A Talkspace therapist can help put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer for my listeners, visit Talkspace.com slash manwhore. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to the face sitters and celibate switches. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, 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 welcome to the show. If you are new and you know what, welcome back if you're not. If this is your first time checking out the show, maybe you're a friend of our guest today, Tayomi. This is a podcast where typically I talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, and why we didn't work out. However, today's special guest is not one of my former flames. No, no, no. Uh, no, it is a sex educator, writer, YouTube personality, sex expert, the Glamazon, Tayomi. And I can't wait to share her with y'all in a bit. But first, show dates, people, show dates. Yes, okay. Uh, if you're listening to this on time, I am currently in San Francisco. Friday, June 9th, I will be at Mutiny Cafe at 8 p.m. And Saturday, June 10th, I will be at Spice Monkey Restaurant at 7.30, feeling very uncomfortable with the name of the venue. <laughs> and then uh, back in New York City, June 22nd, I am doing a roast battle at New York Comedy Club against my good friend and former guest of the show, Miguel Dalmau. Super funny dude. For more information on those show dates and more, if you want to buy tickets to the roast battle, just head on over to manwhorepod.com slash comedy. And while you're over at manwhorepod.com, sign up for the mailing list, people. You're missing out on a lot of exclusive Manwhore Podcast news, offers, and giveaways. Especially, you know, when you leave your email address, use your name or not, I don't care, but leave your zip code. If you are based in America, because uh, when I, I'm keeping track of who I've got in which metropolitan areas. So look, when, and I've said this many times before, if I find out I've got like a thousand people in Iowa, guess what? I'm going to come do some stand-up comedy in Iowa. So uh, we did the Fan Whore Facebook Live Hangout uh, last Wednesday. Super fun. I enjoyed chatting with the people who showed up, played some fun games. Answered some good questions. The next uh, Facebook Live Hangout is going to be on Wednesday, June 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, you can always watch the replay video on my Facebook fan page uh, for the Man Whore Podcast. One of the things that we announced during the Fan Whore Facebook Live Hangout was the dates for Man Whore Con. Yes, I am now ready to announce and tell you when this will be. First, shout out to Lance. Longtime patron of the show, uh, Lance, for giving me the name Man Horcon. 95% going to use that unless I come up with something else. But I, th I think Man Horcon really kind of sums it up. Man Horcon is going to be Columbus Day weekend. For those of you who are not aware of, of when Columbus Day weekend is, uh, that's in October. We're going to be doing events October 7th and October 8th. So now's the time to start saving up, checking flights, taking a look at your vacation days. Uh, take a look to see if you get Columbus Day off on October 9th or not. Over the course of this summer, I will be announcing uh, more events, more things that we're going to be doing over the weekend. The, uh, the crown jewel of the weekend, of course, will be a live Man Whore podcast taping. Yes, going to do an episode with one of my exes in front of a live audience. And I can't wait to uh, announce the various events over the course of this summer. There are two ways to, uh, to participate. You can buy a ticket to the live podcast taping. Or you can, also, or you can buy uh, a ticket to Manhorcon itself, which will give you exclusive access to the weekend itinerary. 
so you'll know where to be, where to hang out with me. It'll give you access to the Live Man Whore podcast taping, to a very exclusive, special, sexy after party, admission to any places that we are attending, and much, much more. Uh, tickets will be available as of next week. Next week, you will uh, hear me talking about the tickets and, and pricing options and the perks for my Patreon supporters. But right now, I want to at least give you the dates so you can start your planning, so you can start looking at a calendar, so you can start discussing options amongst yourselves. For those of you uh, who are on the cusp of wanting to come, I will be arranging affordable lodging options through large Airbnb rentals. In New York City, they have these like big, you know, four, five, six, seven bedroom apartments. They're very nice, but they get more affordable the bigger the place. There will be limited options for this, but they will get the cost of lodging down to about sixty to ninety dollars per night plus tax. And that's the range I'm going for. I'm hoping that this will make Manhorcon more affordable and more realistic for many of you considering it. There will be limited options for this. So uh, as soon as tickets go live, whenever you buy your ticket, be sure to email me to reserve your space for these affordable lodging options. So I'm very excited to uh, get to know y'all over ManhorCon. Save the dates, October 7th and 8th. Unofficially, maybe the night of October 6th. I don't know yet. Start making some plans. Uh, I'm very excited for those of you who have already reached out being like, yo, Billy, I'm so in. I'm like, I'm so excited. <laughs> let's get to some, uh, let's get to a uh, fan email, listener email. This one comes from Oscar in Stockholm. Uh, this email is titled Feedback on Episode 161. Oscar writes, Hey, you sensitively delightful man whore. New listener here that just checked out the episode and finished listening to the part about 13 Reasons Why. Just wanted to let you know that you put into words something I've had in my head as well for a long time. For me, it wasn't bullying from a class. It was a mentally abusive and suicidal ex-girlfriend. Saved her life three times, whether it was from cutting or taking 50 to 75 pain pills and me making her throw up. I never felt like a normal kid. Partly because I was overweight and partly because my dad was out of state and out of the country four times a week, which put me at a vulnerable place and eventually let her mental issues rub off on me even though I was the one that was going to do something to save her life. I was with this woman from the ages of 14 to almost 21, but never really felt at ease with my mind until I, through a partner, got a membership to a fetish community and found an outlet for sexual, mental, and emotional journeys in a setting of mutual respect and caring. I'm now 26 years old, making a bit above $40,000 a year, and I am involved in a fetish club that enables people to act out both kinks and emotional trauma. There have been periods of over a year where every day I was thinking that no one would mourn me if I chose to kill myself. I've even previously tried. And I'm still not sure I'm never going to kill myself, but... I've found so many reasons to live. If you want to read this out on the podcast, feel free. If it helps people vent their thoughts and feelings, I'm all for it. With love, respect, and sharing of the respectful man whoring, your six foot four Swedish bearded Viking Oscar from Stockholm. I got a lot of uh, emails like this after episode 161. Um, I, you know, I'm not reading all of them on the show. I did not have the opportunity to, um, properly answer all of them yet. Partially because it's, it's intimidating for people to open up about this and to share something so personal. I always wanted to make sure I did it justice. Oscar, I am, I am so, so happy that you too have found many reasons to live and I, I hope that you continue every day to find more reasons to stay breathing. I am sure that there are people who would mourn you if you ever did that. But I want you to know 
that there is a man whore in New York City who would. And I do hope that you never make that tragic decision. <clears throat> Plus, the world needs more Vikings. Uh, there are not enough Vikings in the world. Doesn't Sweden have like some sort of population crisis right now? I want to thank you for opening up, uh, sir. I do love getting your emails. Um, I answer almost all of them. Uh, anyone who wrote after Ep 161, I promise I am going to email you back. I just want to make sure I can like sit in a proper headspace <laughs> um, to you know to to respectfully reply. Uh, if you have any comments or questions ever, you can email me at manwhorepod at gmail.com. We are still getting ready to do a giveaway. Uh, if we get at least 500 responses to my demographic survey, I'm going to be doing a sexy giveaway for my listeners and my subscribers on the mailing list. Uh, if you don't even care about the sexy giveaway, uh, you can still help your fellow fan whores by filling out my demographic survey. It's a few questions. The entire thing takes about 40 seconds. And if you don't have 40 seconds to give to me, well, shucks. That's unfortunate. Please just take a moment to head on over to manwhorepod.com slash survey. There's no login or sign up necessary just to prove how quick and how simple and how easy it is to fill out the survey, since I started talking about the survey, you could have already completed the survey. So please, it's a huge help for me. It's going to uh, assist me in getting the proper advertisers on this show so that you're not just hearing boring ads from you know MailChimp and Squarespace. Please, manwarpod.com slash survey. And now for this week's guest, the Glamazon, Tayomi. Tayomi is a sex expert uh, that I came across on Twitter. She was she was recommended by um, she was uh, recommended by Feminista Jones, who was retweeting her tons. So I was like, "Yo, what's this woman about?" And I was like, "Oh my god, she's great." Tayomi does a lot of YouTube videos trying to help you improve uh, your sex life, and we're going to be talking about that, talking about riding the North Face. But something, you know, she talked about that stood out to me was that she is abstinent. And she is a gorgeous, sexy woman who's choosing to be abstinent. And that spoke to me because, you know, over the last several months, I've uh, I've certainly started to experience a lower libido. It's really no surprise what that's from. You know, I, I went through a breakup and that so through first it's it's being sad and then after the being sad it's you know i gained a bunch of weight and when i gain weight i feel unsexy when i'm unsexy my libido's lower it's like really no mystery you know when i lose weight i feel sexier i want to fuck more when i gain weight i feel unsexy i just want to watch netflix but i definitely haven't experienced this nearly for nearly as long as i've been experiencing it until now and you know that's a little bit of a mind fuck uh because i can't always i can't um you know, I can't always be the man whore. It, that's a little bit of a mind fuck, you know, to have your name attached to the word man whore, to being some slutty fuck boy and not wanting to fuck all the time. Like, that's kind of, that was definitely a thing I had to think about and come to terms with. And I also had to come to accept it that it's fine and that it doesn't mean I'm broken abstinence, lower libido, these are all fine, normal things. Some of them are things that happen to you. Some of them are things that you can change. Some of them are things that you choose. And they're all fine and they're all valid. Yes, you can be a sex expert who's being abstinent. Yes, you can be a very sex positive sexual person who's also not feeling like having sex right now. By the way, the, the breakup weight that is re referenced in this episode as if it's present tense, this that's because we recorded this in the midst of it all. I think we recorded this back in like March. So uh, this is all old stuff that's uh, coming up as new. You know, like last night I went on a, a Bumble date and super cute and very gig very giggly. They're, like she's so giggly like there's no way she doesn't laugh when she comes you know that type of giggly and uh, fine enough con you know fine conversation and 
seems interested and starts being touchy. And it's when I'm having con- in, when I'm having engaged conversation about topics I'm really interested in with a pretty person, and she starts touching my arm. That's usually when I start getting hard. But I really had like no physical response. Now that doesn't mean I'm broken. It just means that I wasn't horny. She even had me back up to her place. You know, when we were done with drinks, we'd go up to her apartment, and I'm thinking like, well, let's just see what happens. Um, she offers me a beer. I have my beer. We talk more. We talked a lot about like New York City history because I can really geek out on that stuff. But at the end of the day, I just, I, I just I wasn't very horny. I didn't really feel like hooking up. You can't be the man whore all the time. And I'm sure Tayomi uh, doesn't always feel like she has to be the glamazon all the time. So it was it was nice to when I'm re-listening to this episode when you know in editing to prepare for today, I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And that makes me feel better about that. Uh, You'll notice Taomi, you know, a very spiritual woman also, you know, really ties the spirituality to the sex stuff in a way that uh, I'm certainly not used to. But we had a really good talk, talking about sex education and social media and, you know, hooking up or not hooking up with fans and a whole lot more. Quick note, if you hear any like facts that sound concerning or inaccurate, I do a very brief fact checking, uh, a correction at the end of the episode. So if you go like, huh, that doesn't sound right, just stick around to the end. Okay, but for now, listen up for me talking with the sexpert, Tayomi. I am so excited to be sponsored by Talkspace. Talkspace makes therapy affordable and convenient by connecting you to a therapist you can talk to all day, every day. And I I love this idea. What, I'm going to wait five days for my appointment to talk about what's happening now? Nonsense. My Talkspace therapist will be ready to unpack that phone call with dad today. For as little as $32 a week, you can work with an experienced, licensed therapist handpicked just for you. On Talkspace, you can send unlimited text, audio, and video messages. And as a special offer for my listeners, you can get $30 off your first month and show support for this podcast by using the coupon code MANHOR when you sign up. Again, go to Talkspace.com slash MANHOR or download their app on your phone and use the promo code MANHOR for $30 off. Talkspace therapy for how we live today um and just uh forgive me is it it's tiomi right tiomi tiomi okay i feel like most caribbean uh most caribbean people and like african people say tiomi because they think it's a nigerian name and i'm like it's totally not but um yeah it's it's a mixture of tyra banks and naomi campbell so it's tiomi yeah (laughs) all right (laughs) well I'm, i'm drinking some whiskey with a sex educator tiomi uh, yes, cheers. YouTube famous. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. Like, people will tell me that, and I'm like, you know, I kind of don't like feed into the hype of myself. So, but, but you say dressed, uh, dressed as, as as you are right now. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like to dress like a superhero every day. <laughs> He's like. Do you have normal clothes? Or these are normal clothes. Like, <laughs> You're just like, I don't feel in the hype of myself except when I'm dressing super fab. Oh, I, I, this, <laughs> see, this is why I'm called the Glamazon because I'm, I'm glamorous. You know, I like to dress up. And I feel like, why wait until a, like a special occasion to dress up when you can dress up every day? You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. But then again, like when you work for yourself, you do whatever you want. Most people have like a wardrobe Monday through Friday. It's like khakis or a business suit or something like business casual, business professional. Me, I'm like most of the time I'm in pajamas yeah. at home. Right now I'm rocking like fun employed. This yes, is my fun this employed. is my this is my look. <laughs> <laughs> this is my uh, this is my casual version. My uh, my business version is just a tighter t-shirt. That's mm-hmm. that's about it. <laughs> tighter t-shirt. It's just like a slightly more form fitting. <laughs> that's funny. But right now I'm rocking breakup weight, so I'm like not trying to have anything form fitting. Everything should be loose. Oh man, breakup weight is so real. <laughs> it's so real for everybody. There's there's people who they 
lose like who lose 20 pounds from a breakup mm. and then there's everyone else who hates those people yep you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like um what kind of jeans do you have can i have some yeah i just like i bought new jeans just now <laughs> and i'm like fuck like do i buy the jeans now or do i see myself in the jeans i know i can wear when i work out again you know i just feel like you just need to buy what like buy where you are i think it's kind of a waste of money and irrational for people to buy a dress and, well i mean it could motivate some people so i wake up in the morning and i try to i try to put that belt and when i can't get to the last notch i'm like oh you know uh you're too fat for these jeans billy <laughs> put the fucking brownie down look shop where you are <laughs> you know like i recently lost 50 pounds nice. so the good thing about my weight though is that it's evenly proportioned so um i kind of gain weight everywhere yeah but i buy things that stretch so even if i lose weight the things still look good like i don't have to replace all my clothes sure sure <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm not the kind of person that's like let me buy a size 10 at a size 14 and like yeah i'm gonna those are gonna motivate me to work out Nah, not even. I'm like, oh, I'm on this couch. It's too comfortable when I'm moving. <laughs> so where do you come from? Like as a sex educator, because you don't, you didn't go the normal route. Like you don't have like degrees in, oh, in no. health and this and that and the other thing or a sex certification. And Not yet. You know, I, I did get accepted into the um, sex coach you. So whenever I'm ready to start that, I just got to pay my little deposit and then I'll begin. But mm -hmm. because I'm traveling so much, like. I don't want to enter into a program of study and I can't focus and put like energy into it because I'm not just going to pay money for that. But I've literally been studying sexuality since I was like 15 on like a biological medical level. I didn't start having sex until I was 19 when I came to school here in Brooklyn Where'd for you go? fashion design. I went to Pratt Institute for about a year. Ah. And it's a really tough school to get into. So that was like a huge accomplishment for me because they only accept like 26 students every year in their fashion program. I don't know if they changed the number now. But yeah, so I did that for a year and then dropped out and was like, all right, what am I going to do now with my life? Oh, well, I'll figure it out. So I started modeling and then started having more experiences sexually and then started having like sexual health issues with like my ovaries and, and whatnot and so what was wrong with your ovaries you know i had um i also like how in that in that history you gloss over like eh, america's next top model uh, oh yeah <laughs> you're like oh, you know, it's only like on a major <laughs> television program i mean you know we can get all into that <laughs> we don't have to but, get into it i just like how you gloss over it it's just casual <laughs> well you know what because this is the thing like when i, I was feel in, like it's at least a bullet point it is a bullet point <laughs> but it rarely comes up in like these kind of interviews you know but people always ask me, like, how did you get to where you're at? Because people look at me and are like, oh, I want to be popular like you. And I'm like, well, you have to understand that there's a history with me before sexuality where, like, modeling was my life and fashion was my life. But I've always been writing. That's mm -hmm. the thing. I started writing, like, press releases and doing, like, album reviews for, you know, different artists. And I worked for like a website in Chicago interviewing different celebrities and musical artists. But then also when I did America's Next Top Model, that like made me even more popular and people started following me because of that. So then I just took that fan base and like when I started, when I put modeling on the back burner, not like completely stopped, but just put it on the back burner to focus on sexuality, which I feel is like my life purpose, then those people just like followed me. And we're like, okay, this is cool. We didn't know you were like this. And then I just gained a whole new following when my work started getting out there. But like Top Model was something, it was a goal. And like yeah. in high school, that's when it, when I was in high school, it debuted. And I was like, man, I'm going to get on this show. So as soon as I was old enough, I started auditioning and it took like six tries and I finally got it. But I'm the kind of person where anything I say I'm going to do, I do it. Mm. And you know, it manifests. So I kind of like glaze over it a little because like... <laughs> It was it, it was an episode, but the great thing about it was that I got so much good TV time and like fan favorited, and um, a se the segment I did with Tyra like ran as a commercial. So even though I was only on one episode, like as far as exposure is concerned, I got a lot of good exposure. But <clears throat> after that, though, because like. 
when you don't win that show or if you don't get on that show, like mm. as a young girl that's like wanting to be a model, it can like crush your soul. It can crush everything. But at that point, my life like started to take a turn and my focus started to kind of shift from modeling primarily because I'm considered like plus size. I'm not traditional size model. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. I, I've had on another uh, Next Top model gal who's now a comic, Sarah Hartsore, and she was also like, oh, sweet. Yeah, also was like considered plus size. But I was like, what? Like, this. Yeah. It's insane that that's what plus size is considered. Yeah, it is crazy. And at that point, it's like, all right, especially when you're a black girl, the agencies are always like, well, we have our black girl. We have our black plus girl, you know? So I was like, fuck this shit. Like, I got to change something. And my dad, you know, was the one that was kind of like, all right, remodeling's going well for you, but at the same time, you're very talented as a writer, so you should be using that gift and it would give you everything you want. So, But he probably didn't it. mean like, write about dicks. He didn't care. He, <laughs> he said, care? write whatever you want. I don't care what you write about. So, right. so like, the parents are on board with the, with the sex career. Yeah, like when I, when I went to them, because I talked to them about everything, I'm like, so I'm thinking about starting this blog about like sexual health and sexual pleasure for the woman, for, for women primarily. And like, because when I started doing research at the time, mm. it, was like, it was like 2010, I started doing research and I didn't, I didn't see anybody that like spoke like me and looked like me that was black and also like educated, but also speaking about sex in a way that was classy and not like super raunchy. So instead of me complaining, like there isn't anybody I can relate to, I'm like, well, I'll be that person. So I started like running the idea by my parents and they were like, yeah, sounds good, whatever. My mom's whole thing was like, just don't be a porn star. <laughs> uh, uh, that was the limit? <laughs> yeah. She's like, just don't be a porn star. <laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever. Sure. So to figure out if I really wanted to do this, I was like, all right, there's this expo happening in, in the city because I'm from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's this expo happening. It's the Exotica Expo and it's like basically a porn convention, yeah. right? And I was like, if I can go to this thing and feel comfortable, then I know I can work in this industry. So I went... And I was pleasantly surprised. Like, first of all, everyone was so nice to me. Secondly, everyone thought I was a porn star. <laughs> how I was dressed. Like, I had on a corset and some, like, leggings that were, like, a leather. So, something like this, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know. Yeah. But, and then I met Sarah J. And Sarah J, what a sweetheart. She's been on the show. She, yeah, I fucking love she Sarah. She's my first porn star. I did a porno really? with her. Uh, I, <laughs> like, like, we are like this. Oh, Because she was, like, my first, like... I guess girl experience. I mean, it wasn't like that deep, but I had never been groped on or felt up by a woman until this point. So she was like, hello, and just Hong Kong. She saw me walking <laughs> past and she was like, ooh, hello. I was like, oh, who is she? Like, I was kind of like drawn to her. So I went over to her table and she put a sticker on me and then she just like felt my booty and she just like felt my titties. Like, she just felt me up. And I was like, oh man, I don't know whether to feel violated or like not because this actually feels kind of good, you know? And but we became cool from that moment. And after that experience, I was like, okay, like, because all my friends went with, with me and my sister, my twin sister. And I was like, okay, guys, I'm ready. Like, yeah. I think I can do this. And so the following year, my mom got tired of me talking about doing it and was like, why don't you just do it? So woke up one morning, launched my blog, glamorotica101.com and I quit my job soon after, and the rest was history. It, it took some time. I mean, I've been doing this. So this will be my sixth year anniversary in September because mm -hmm. I launched my blog on Memorial Day of 2011. Right. <laughs> and so it's taken some time to, like, you know, build a following and stuff. But there have been several things that have happened over the course of my sexpert career that have kind of, like, made me go viral. Well, yeah, what was the what was like the big video? You have one with like twelve million something views or something, or actually, <laughs> riding the North Face, I think probably has like, <laughs> well, maybe like twenty five million or less. And what is riding the North Face? I, I didn't so get it. We, a... we scheduled this very last minute, so like <laughs> I I did as much research as I could. <laughs> riding the North Face mm. is a sex position. I didn't come up with the name. There was this website that used to exist. It like shut itself down, which was crazy because it was getting hella traffic. But yeah. it used to be my favorite site to um, reference. It was called sexinfo101.com. And it had all these great like animations of sex positions. And riding okay. the North Face is basically a woman riding a guy's face. So I did a video. Is there like a particular spot you have to do it to, no. it, to be the North it's just, Face? You're, you're facing North. 
right? You're, okay, you're so you do have this. to position yourself in some way. It's like, okay, where's the Empire State Building? Okay, let's the, turn that way. <laughs> riding the South Face, riding the South Face is basically riding his face backwards. Okay, like reverse cowgirl in a sense. Right. Okay. But it's face riding. Sure, you know? sure. But and I was like, why the fuck is this video so popular? But I realized my my brother made me realize one thing. He said, "You got North Face in the title." Uh, so when people Google North Face or look it up on um, YouTube, YouTube, it goes to your <laughs> video. And people on, on YouTube, they always comment. They're like, how did I end up here? Oh, we know. That shit's you, you had some cash to burn <laughs> and you ended up at this video and we're like, this seems way more interesting. It's hilarious. North but, Face ever reach out to you? No. Ever connect? No. No, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did after this. Like, um, so, but Can, hey, I didn't name it. It's just what it was. <laughs> Can you redo the video, but wearing the jacket? Can you? Right. <laughs> That would be hilarious. And can you make sure the logo is facing <laughs> the camera? Hey, I would totally, if, if North Face wants to do that, I would totally do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome sponsored content. But like, that's one of the most popular videos on my page. And I think also, not just because North Face is in it, but because the guy that I'm with is smaller than me. Okay. So when I sit on him, he almost disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that's a fetish for a lot of people, I think. And um, like it took Naomi Banks to like point that out and point out some other things about my channel and how like great it is. She's like, don't ever like leave where you are as far as like how you show things. Like this is perfect, and mm. you have like you created a lane for yourself. Shout out to Naomi. Yeah, but. Um, it was that that video just kind of went viral online, but then I did Tosh.0 oh on Comedy Central. But you know what? Sarah and I had this conversation because a lot of my stuff sometimes gets flagged or blocked or removed. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it's because you have too much booty. And I was like, because yeah, I see white girls, like no shade to white girls, but I see white girls on YouTube deep throating bananas and they get like 43 million views, right? But if I put up something, even remotely licking something that's phallic shaped, it gets blocked, flagged, and possibly removed. So I'm like, not trying to pull the race card here, but I'm pulling the race card. Like, what is it? We're doing you're the same thing. You're getting pulled because you're black? I feel like, you know, I feel like society in general is kind of intimidated by black sexuality. Sure. You know? And and I say that too because, like, I do meet a lot of people who are not people of color who will say things like, we know you're superior, <laughs> you know, or like we're fetishized. Uh -huh as black people as having like superior sex you know whatever so yeah that but then also i just don't know like it, it really pisses me off because it's not just me that has this problem with me being black like mm. i have other friends in the sexuality community who like we all get blocked especially fucking facebook well yeah facebook is facebook, uptight in and of itself facebook but. is trash and then like with youtube now being owned by google like they have all these you know, and I too, I feel like it's also the people who are watching your content because you have some people who are trolls sure. and they'll come and they'll watch it. They'll watch the whole video just to be like, I don't like it. Flag. Yeah. And it's like, why be a hater after watching the entire thing? Because you're personally offended by what you're seeing. It's like you just came beating off to my videos. Like you should they, probably be in a good do. mood. Yeah. Should be euphoric right now. Right. But, but you're intimidated by the black sexuality. I mean, yeah. We even made laws about it. We made laws but like, man, those those black guys are way better at sex than us. Let's like as many laws to keep them from fucking the white chicks <laughs> as possible, because then they're they're gonna realize how bad we are if they oh fuck them. Uh, but you know what's funny though? What's funny is that that is the perception because mm -hmm. there are plenty of black guys who don't know how to fuck. Sure. Like I just and you know what? There was a study that was just done that said that heterosexual women are the least likely mm -hmm. to have an orgasm or really even enjoy sex of all the sexual orientations. And it's because cisgender heterosexual men are so rooted in their ego and focus more on what they see in porn and trying to copy that with every single last woman that they see instead of realizing like we're all different. Mm -hmm. We all have different size and shape of vaginas. We all get aroused differently. And some of us have actually been through trauma, not just sexual trauma, sure. but just like, Emotional trauma that's suppressing our libido and our sexuality. So and just being taught that you're not supposed to enjoy it, all exactly. that stuff. Yeah, it's so it's so many things that are compounded on top of uh, the female, like a, a woman's sexuality and libido. And it kind of annoys me and irritates me sometimes when men write me and say, "Well, how can I get her to do this? Or how can I get her to do that? Or oh, I want her to do more of this." And I'm like, 
ask her. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, have you even talked to her about it? Like, I had a guy today that said, you know, I feel guilty about asking my wife to do more. And I know that it's because, like, I know that the added responsibilities in our life have changed our sex life. And I'm like, well, maybe you feel guilty because you know you could be doing more to actually help her relieve those responsibilities. Like, what are you doing to make her feel in the mood? Mm. You know what I'm saying? A woman's not, we don't, we're not, we don't operate the same way as men do where you see something that's visually stimulating and you get an erection and you're ready to fuck. Us, there's a lot that's going on internally and like mentally we have to be in a place to be able to say, okay, I can relax and forget about everything and now I can get turned on. If you're thinking about your job, Mm. the kids, what you're going to do tomorrow and then body issues like, oh, I had this baby now, I got stretch marks, I don't feel sexy. You got three things that are now compounding uh, physiological, psychological, and sociological and economical factors that play like, on oh, the man, libido. She, she doesn't like my broke ass room. This is no, dead, <laughs> no, seriously. And I, I, I'm gonna say dead ass though because we're in Brooklyn. Dead you ass can though. Say dead ass. <laughs> dead ass though because like I don't know why it's like a Brooklyn thing, but like I tell men that all the time. I'm like. You have to create a space of safety and comfort for a woman. The room needs to be warm. It needs to be clean. It needs to smell good. Mm. I will never forget this. This guy, (laughs) I'm not going to say any names, but this guy (laughs) had been chasing me down on social media for years. And I was bored one day and wanted a free meal. Mm -hmm. Because we do that as women. Sure. Right? I was bored and wanted a free meal, so I entertained his advances. When I met him, no lie, he looked like Quasimodo from the hunchback of Notre Dame. No shade, but that's what he looked like. And I was like, not even judging that. But what I did judge was him thinking he was going to fuck me in his room that would look like an episode of Hoarders. No, oh, yeah. He no, like literally, his bed was the only thing clean in this room. And around the bed, there were like old box TVs, old ass magazines, vinyl records, trash old clothes like you're like what's this pet rock doing here (laughs) no he has some random ass shit in his room and like he's got pogs he he brought a (laughs) bottle right for us to drink because he thought he was gonna get me like wasted and then fuck me in this horrible hoarder's room this man pulled a styrofoam cup off the floor and he (laughs) no no I don't want to believe you. He dusted it out and he poured himself a drink. He I just, said, he's just, <laughs> he's like, he's no, just. seriously. I was like, <laughs> I'm not drinking out of that. And then like when he started to try to make a move on me, I said, that's it, man. I sat here and I entertained you because I'm nice, but I'm not fucking you and doing anything. Like, first of all, I'm not physically attracted to you. Mm. Secondly, what the fuck? You think I'm really going to do that? And he had the nerve to say, oh, well, the maze didn't come this week. Why is the rest of your home spotless in your room? It's hoarders. Did you go, you can afford a maid? I mean, that's not, that's the question I'd be asking him the way it sounds. At that point, when he said that, I said, that's it. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. Don't <laughs> don't hit me up ever again, bro. This was like a few years ago, like maybe like four, four years ago. And as I was riding home, I was shaking my head. I was like, that food wasn't even that good. Mm. Like, <laughs> I was like, Did, it wasn't Do you pick up off of social media uh, often? Um, mm-mm. I'm not going to say often. Do you have a Do you have like a policy about fucking fans? I don't fuck fans because mm. fans are just like they sit there and they fantasize about you and they don't know the real you. I'm packing right now for my upcoming travels, and by the time you hear this, I will be on a plane to San Francisco and Austin. And you know I'll be logging on to the Pure app when I land to find some safe, awesome, casual sex. I don't have time to wait for algorithms to match me on certain swiping apps. You ever travel, you get swiping, uh, and then you don't start getting your matches until you're on your way back home. The Pure app doesn't make it about maybe meeting up, and instead makes it about meeting up today. The Pure app also takes the ambiguity out of online hookups. We all know why we're there, and we all want it tonight. Download the Pure app today on the App Store or Google Play. Pure, the hookup app that says it's a hookup app. You know, first of all, I'm, I'm celibate. I'm practicing celibacy currently. So whoa, whoa. no how fucking did, going on. How is that? Whoa, <laughs> wait, what? Why? Wait, what's going 
What? Yo. Whoa. Sorry. I have a lot of exclamation <laughs> to say. <laughs> to be honest, like I hit a rock bottom at the end of 2015. I was dating this guy that was broken, which was also a reflection on me being broken. So in the 2016 or 15? 15. Okay, okay. And, you know, it just all came to a head, like some some things happened. And I was like, you know what? I just need to like take a break. My mom had already been encouraging me to like practice celibacy and some of my former lovers. So I was like, yeah, I think it's time. Why were they suggesting that? Well, because they saw that I was unhappy. Like I had hit an emotional bottom. Like I had nothing else to give. So at that point, I was like, all right, if I'm with this guy and he's a broken individual, literally where everything around him is physically broken and then I'm like seeing how things are broken in his life, then that's a reflection on me as well because the people who you spend your time with or the people who you commune with, they are a mirror. You know, they, they, they reflect something within you. So I was like, all right, it's time to like take a chill pill and figure it out. And so I decided, I stopped having sex December 22nd, 2000. 15. And you haven't had sex since then? No. Uh, anything? I play. So like I like I had my first butt plug experience Whoa. this week, which was awesome. That doesn't sound too celibate to me. And Well, the thing is, celibacy is defined by the person that's practicing so it. So what is it for you? For me, it's no, no penetration. Like no penis in vagina, penis in Any, asshole. <laughs> no penis in anything. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, but while I've been practicing celibacy, I've hand been jobs. Ex- I don't mind hand jobs because the whole thing is but, like. But that's that falls under the like acceptable. Play. Yeah, because I'm not okay. I'm not being penetrated sure. like because also with certain clients I do body work where I'll give like a a phallic massage like a lingam massage mm-hmm. to help like move blood and and bring feeling and you know and help orgasm with no, not even no. orgasm because that's not the that's not the purpose of a, a massage mm. a lot of men have never really tended to their penises in a way that's loving and tender and caring without the expectation of ejaculating mm-hmm. and so when i do have clients that i perform this massage on they're pleasantly surprised because they're like wow i've never had this type of attention to my penis like and so used to just jerking it off, sure. you know what I mean? From like day one when they figure out they have an erection, but they've never had that type of attention and they've never had it coming from a woman where mm. she's not expecting him to get off. And so it's a completely different experience. But like I've been experimenting with my kinks. Okay. So instead of me participating in intercourse, now I'm I'm like expressing my sexuality in a way where I'm experimenting with bdsm Mm. and that aspect of sexuality that really doesn't have anything to do with penetrative sex at all but it's still sexually arousing so i've been in training top or or bottom on that i am a i am a switch Mm -hmm. and i discovered that in my training with jet setting jasmine and shouts out to them it's uh setting jasmine jet setting jasmine and they are a dynamic duo consisting of king noir and Jet Setting Jasmine. And they are my fetish coaches. And we do a lot of events together. Like we just came back from the Exotica Expo in Denver. Where we put on a hot ass performance on the main stage. King Noir also is an, an MC from Jersey. And he goes by Hassan Salam. So he does a set where he raps. And Jasmine, she spanks me. And she also waxes me. But she like wax. spanks you to the beat? Is that no? No, not really. <laughs> okay. But it's like really sensual. Like she first starts by like oiling me up and like rubbing me. So she has me like lean over in a chair and my ass is exposed. And we've done this several times. The first time I did it, it I it like they told me I had an assignment and I said, okay, cool. And it was an exhibitionist uh assignment and so we were at a convention last year sex down south in atlanta and they were like all right we're gonna spank and wax you on stage and i was like well shit i didn't know it was gonna be that but i so okay let me backtrack when you get into training with them they have you fill out a form and it's like a bunch like a dozen like dozens of are they like are they life doming you is that no okay okay, okay. they're literally training me so like i've always been attracted to the kink lifestyle and fetishes, but it's like a completely different subsect of sexuality. So instead of me like going in and exploring and having like unpleasant experiences, I've always wanted a coach. 
and also a coach of color. Mm -hmm. So I got introduced to Jasmine through a mutual friend or a mutual associate. And we just clicked, we connected. And so we got into training and it's almost like because we work in the same industry, we, we play off of each other. So they promote me, I promote them. You know, because while I'm in training with them, I'm talking about my experiences. I'm bigging them up and all of that. So this exhibitionist thing, it was like cool because it was one of the fetishes that I, I marked off on the on your application. Right. On the sheet. Because <laughs> it's it was, it was like three columns. It was a, a hard yes, a yeah. maybe and a hard no. So there have been some maybe things that they have had me explore. And in exploring them, I was like huh, well, this isn't so bad. And so, but the exhibitionist thing was a hard yes. And so that was my first assignment in front of all these people, most of them my colleagues in the industry. <laughs> you know, I'm like basically in pasties and a G-string and I'm getting my ass smacked and flogged and waxed and it felt amazing. <laughs> and this ha then this happened like several other times. So it happened, um, we did this in London, but this time I didn't have any panties on. So I was like, just have your asshole yeah. exposed to all your coworkers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but in London it was coworkers. Got... It was just like like random London sure. okay. goers that came to this erotic event. We basically traveled the world, yeah. like teaching classes and stuff together. But, so they're also educators. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, they are, and um, they're dope. Like, it's so cool to be a part of an industry where all of us are sex positive and our minds are open, right? And we're all here for the same purpose, which is to eradicate the taboo mm -hmm. that has kind of been like this dark cloud over sexuality. And the beautiful thing that I love is that it's not just like white people or black people. It's all of us like working together. And when we all come together in that space, like it's not about color. It's about our, our love of sex. Yeah. And that's the dope thing. It, to, the, the fact that like, I can go to Amsterdam and somebody's like, like that follows me. It's like, oh my God, you're in my city. The shit's dope because it's like sex brought them to me. But then when they come to me, they realize like I'm more than just sex. Like it's just how I live my life and the messages that I put out every day. They're like so positive and like uplifting. So they get more from me than just like sexual advice or sexual yeah. satisfaction. You know, you hear that people. I'm not just a slutty man whore. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a person. God damn it. <laughs> no, seriously. Like I think sometimes people forget that because there are times when, like on Periscope or YouTube Live or Instagram Live, fuck Facebook Live, <laughs> um, where anywhere I'm going live, like we'll start talking about sex, but then we start talking about life. Like people are always surprised when they find out I'm an anime fan. I'm like, why are you surprised by that? You know? Oh, well, you know, pretty girls just, okay, hold on, pause. Why is it assumed that pretty girls are not into half of the things we're into? Go like, to any fucking Comic Con. Look at the hot chicks dead, in cosplay. Dead ass, though, that's all I'm saying. There's a whole like subreddit that I jerk off to just of cosplay <laughs> chicks. Yeah, the cosplay chicks are the hot. The other though. one's volleyball girls. Okay, it's <laughs> like every time um I'll put up on Snapchat like I'm watching Seven Deadly Sins or Bleach or like Death Note or something. You're like, oh shit, you watch Death Note, and I'm like. Didn't you just see it on my snap? Like I, yeah. I just snapped it, and I'm I'm not like doing this for pretend to get likes. Like yeah. I'm actually sitting here watching this right now and eating ramen at the same time. <laughs> like <laughs> I've been an anime fan since I was seven. Yeah, you know I used to wake up early, like six a.m. before going, like two hours before having to wake up to go to school just to watch Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball. Uh, do you do you see like an end to the um, to the celibacy in the? Near in the future in general, do you? When I meet my life partner, that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. Oh, you're yes. holding out for that? Heck yeah! Okay, because at this point, I've had enough recreational sex to last me a lifetime. Recreational sex sounds like a class. It does. <laughs> it should be shit. All right, class. So today we're going to couple blowjobs. All like, right, we're going to be pairing people off, Jill. <laughs> you're gonna have to pair up with Karen because we have a we have a gender imbalance today. Um, 
<laughs> yes. Joe, you'll strap one on. Uh, that's Seriously, though, it would be a great class. And it's funny because um, at Exotica in Denver, I met this um, girl who brought her mother over. And she was like, my mom is a sex educator. And she teaches at like a school here. And she was saying um, that her class is an elective. Like it's not even a requirement, right. but it's like full. And she got me thinking. I'm like, man. When I move to L.A., I definitely want to, like, get into a school somewhere because we need this. Like, Mm -hmm. young people 15 through 25 make up 50% of the newly diagnosed STDs in this country. We don't have comprehensive sex ed in this country, yeah. We don't. It's because it's it's not a requirement. The federal government pass down the responsibility of implementing sex education in the school system to the actual state. Mm-hmm. And then the state passed it down to the districts. And I'm pretty sure, I think the last time I checked Guttmacher, I think it's like, uh, I think it's like 33 states or something where it's not, sex education doesn't have to be quote medically accurate. So yeah. like you could literally teach the stork yeah, and it's legal. It's, that's so trash to me. It is. Because we all come from sexuality. Sexuality is used to sell every fucking thing. Like, I'm going to tell you where it's so blatant. Because here, they put it in subliminally. In Europe, the titties out and it's orange blatant. juice. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, wow, really? Like, I'm, I'm in the subway in the UK, in London, and I'm going up the escalator. I'm seeing these ads, and I'm like, that is so dirty. And my friend's like, really? You're saying it? I'm like, I'm just saying it because I don't see that in America, like, where it's just blatant yeah it's subliminal but it's interesting that they can use sex to sell products and but you want to uh restrict people from learning how to have better sex lives to better their relationships and for their health like the average american couple is a sexless couple number one Mm -hmm. and number two you know you have like millions of people living with stds right now that don't even know it you know, and you have close to half of the population living with HIV. So... Wait, wait, what now? You have close to half of our population living with HIV. We have 150 plus million people. We have almost half of our country living with HIV. Where, where you get that from? Look it up, man. Go on to cdc.gov. That's All these statistics nuts. are out there. Like, But people don't want to talk about that aspect of sexuality. Like, When you choose to become sexually active... You are also choosing to add into public health. So you have a responsibility socially to uphold the health Mm -hmm. of the public, which means getting tested, using condoms. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be hopping around from person to person, use condoms. It's not even that hard. Like, you know, and also invest in your condoms. Like, don't just choose the cheapest one you see. Get something good. Heck yeah. yeah. You want to have good sex? Buy good condoms. Yeah. And the good condom is whichever. Uh, n- none have paid me yet to say that sentence. So I can't. I will not <laughs> do so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but even, it's insane. And then you see every time like uh, some some state adds sex education or adds some sort of condom, pro- some any sort of a program that has to do mm-hmm. it, bettering sexuality, you always see the same stat, right? Yep. STD rates went down, abortions went down, unplanned pregnancies went down, and when they take them out, all of a sudden some school district in Texas has mm-hmm. a chlamydia outbreak. Yeah, and chlamydia and gonorrhea are extremely common, and then gonorrhea has like mutated to where they got now that super, super gonorrhea. Yeah. Well, luckily you're wearing your superhero outfit to combat it. Dun, 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 super, super celibacy. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> but you know what? <clears throat> People don't want to talk about it because they're afraid. Somebody hit me up on Snapchat because I've been putting out this campaign. I'm a part of a coalition called the National Coalition for Sexual Health mm-hmm. here in the states, and. You know, we put out messaging about sexual health. And so we we have this campaign called Yes to Test. So if you say yes to sex, you must say yes to test. You need to get tested. And I put this up on Snapchat and some kid hit me up like, well, there isn't a lot of education on what to do after you find out you have an STD. And I'm like, you're lying because there's plenty of information. You just haven't sought it out. Mm. And I'm like, all STDs are treatable. Most are curable. Listen to what I say. Mm. All are treatable. Most are curable. All right. There are some things you can catch that you will have to live with forever and you will have to treat it. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do? Do you want to spend a few seconds putting on a condom and have carefree sex? Or do you want to take the risk playing Russian roulette with your dick and your pussy 
50-50 chance and possibly get herpes or, or, or HPV or HIV or have I saw C. That, I saw that Eddie Murphy bit when I was a young boy. <laughs> Seriously influenced me. Yeah. When I was like 14, 15, I think it was Raw. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I can't tell. I, I can't remember if Raw is the more homophobic one than the... <laughs> The, the, those those are the only two comedy specials where like I watch them today and I go like fuck I can't enjoy it as much you know <laughs> I could watch yeah. a Cosby special still kind of enjoy it <laughs> you know what but Eddie hey, go on there, man. But Eddie <laughs> I just you know I love Delirious and Raw but now it's like it's just so bad it's so bad uh, but but he has that Russian like uh, you're playing Russian roulette with your dick you are and uh, and I was like oh okay I'm gonna remember this because I'm 14 it does not apply to me right now but yes uh, <laughs> seriously like. For a few moments of pleasure, because most men only last about three to five minutes. So you mean to tell me you're willing to play Russian roulette with your dick for five minutes for a lifetime of HIV, a a lifetime of herpes? No, I'm not willing to do that. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I've never had raw sex. But in the times that I have, I had partners where we got tested. We showed our results. We knew who we've been with before. You know, and so it's like, okay, we're good. But to just meet some random person and just raw dog, like, you're literally taking a risk. I don't get that risk. shit. Yeah. I That's talk to, scary. I talk to comics. They'll be like, yeah, and I raw dog this chick uh, after the show. I'll be like, what are you, crazy? She's a tourist. That's even worse. <laughs> you know what? She's got some sort of, like, Nebraska gonorrhea. Like, I don't oh even God. know what that is. Uh, the mid, Like, the rural <laughs> Midwest? STDs crazy. Right, because they don't fucking talk about sex at all. They won't talk about it because it's and against Jesus' what, plan. And then what else do they have to do there besides do drugs? That's all they do. Hang out at Walmart and fuck behind Walmart. Like, Straight up. Like, I literally drove, like, last year when I did my tour, I, I went on a tour teaching women how to ride dick. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the Lord's work. Yes, doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and you know what? What's funny is that everyone says that. And then there are some people that are like, what do you mean it's the Lord's work? I'm like, no, it is God's work because we come from sex. We, we come from sex, like, and that's creation. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's God. You know what I'm saying? But I toured the country and we drove. Me and my friend, he drove me around the country. So we drove through the Midwest. There is nothing but farmland. Farmland. I'm like, where is the people? But the towns are so small. So it's like, there are literally deserts. When I say deserts, it's like, you have to drive two miles for the nearest clinic. Not two miles, like two hours for the nearest clinic. Mm. You don't have sex education programs. You don't have access to birth control immediately. Like you have to drive a few hours to get it. So then you have these these people that don't have sex education, don't have access to the proper like contraceptives. And so they're just like, you know, and then like incest is really a thing i'm not going there but you already know <laughs> you brought fucking cousins you brought you brought it up uh, you know it's a thing well, it's a well, thing well hey i say whatever consulting adults want to do i don't give a fuck you just be adults do your thing just you know if you're going if you want to fuck your cousin just know that if you have a child you may know that you should be somewhere that like you know has a abortion abortion clinic nearby even that there. Isn't that funny that the places most known for incest are places where like it would be harder to yep. abort your little incest baby? Yeah. And it's like for, for people who claim to be pro-life, it's like you're not pro-life if you're not thinking about the conditions of the life of the child yeah. when it gets here. And a baby that comes out of incest will pretty much have some type of genetic defect. So what kind of quality of life is that child going to have if this couple can't even like provide the proper care? Because I know, I know of people who have to care for children that have been products of incest and they have all kinds of medical problems mm-hmm. and those bills start to stack high. You know what I'm saying? So if you're pro-life, like, are you really thinking about the, the quality of life of the child? Like for people who you are literally You hear that Todd poor, B. in Arkansas? I have, a, I have one patron. Yeah. You know Patreon? Patreon, yeah. yeah. I got one patron. He is... Somehow he listens to this show and he's like anti-choice, voted for Trump, and he's proud of it. And he's like, well, the reason why is because like I want a Supreme Court justice that's going to help us get rid of abortion. I'm just like, so, wait, what? It's like if you want less abortion, have more sex education, you'll have less thank abortion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for advocating for that. Because this is what I want to say to all the pro-life people. So for the women who cannot afford the children, right? And they'll probably say, well, just don't have sex. Well, you can't tell somebody not to have sex because it's their birthright to do so. Mm -hmm. And we are sexual beings that are meant to procreate. But if you're pro-life, 
then are you going to use your tax dollars to take care of the children that are going to be abandoned? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you don't care about the kids that get thrown in trash bags and are thrown out on the side of the road or just left in abandoned? What about all the children right now currently in the United States that are foster children that will never find a home, that are orphans? You think think about the person who sees a Toys R Us bag and thinks they just caught some cool swag and then there's that baby <laughs> it's a dead in there. baby. And, you know, you just ruin that and, person's and, day too. And they literally just like turn their backs on that and like, oh, well, we're not talking about that. No, you are talking about that yeah. because women have to go to desperate measures. If you're forcing a woman to have a child that she doesn't want, she's either going to kill it when it's born mm-hmm. or she's going to neglect it and it's going to turn into a horrible adult eventually, not adding anything to society. You, first of all, why are people so invested in policing other people's bodies? I don't fucking understand that. I don't get it either. Now, I'm not policing anybody's body. I'm encouraging people to have safer sex and to have better sex, right? But I'm not telling people what to and not to do with their bodies. I'm saying, if you're going to do this, maybe you should do it this way because it'll be better for you and the other person that you're interacting with. But I'm not going to tell a woman, it's not right for you to kill your creation. Like, you created that. With, with somebody that either cares that they, that they created it with you or they don't. And then in a situation where it's some guy that raw dogs you after a comedy show and nutted in you and now you're pregnant, he's like, well, that's not my baby. What do you mean? You, you, you clearly did that. You clearly did not pull out. And now you don't want to take care of it. Like a woman ha- has a right to say, yeah. I don't want this creation to go Suck it out of me. Yeah. Get it out. Seriously. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I well, just, it, like millions of dollars are spent on policing women's bodies and it's trash. And the only trash. policing that should happen to anyone's body is people should police Put mine. on a condom. Shit. I was going to say, police <laughs> mine, don't let me go to Rite Aid after 9 p.m. That was, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what though let me tell you something oh whoa okay this is what pisses me off and this is why people don't use condoms all right they lock the shit up they're the most like condoms and lubricants and stuff most stolen items because people are afraid and ashamed fuck to You're buy it in the public yeah to go to the counter and buy it but what's even more shaming is you have to go to the aisle in some of these stores right and press a button ding dong help needed in the family care aisle and then you go there and they press the button to turn it off. Ding dong. How may I serve you? And it's like now everybody in the store Can is looking at you. you serve me some condoms? Right. Yeah. I don't care. Hey, if you're, in, if you're embarrassed, just go buy bulk online. It's cheaper Condomania.com. Anyway. Skim bulk, cheap. Condomania.com. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm expecting like a, a sluttier few months, I, Heck yeah. I'm like, okay, let's get a nice big old box. Let's go Costco Heck style. Yeah. And guess what? If you go on condomania.com, if you are a guy that has a penis that is larger than what is available on the market, there is one brand of condom that you can literally order that's custom sized. I had a guy, no lie. One of my fans, he wrote me about his issue and he was like, I'm literally like the size of your forearm. Like I, I'm, I'm so big that I can't fit in the average condom. I have like super girth. Looking at my forearm right, like, right now. Yeah, no. And this was the only time His I... poor wife. I warranted the dick pic because I wanted to see what he was talking about. Because I hate dick pics. But in a situation, I was like... This one's, this one's approved. Let me see. Yeah, because... For science. Yeah. For because science. I wanted to really see if he was lying. Yeah. But he was telling the truth. Oh, I was God like... Damn. I was like, oh, bro. Go to condomania.com. Uh, and so he went there and he ordered these condoms and he gave me his, his feedback. And he was like, these were great. This was like. What, what condom are you going to? Well, it's a, I don't know the brand itself, oh, okay. but when you go onto the website, like you can literally search the different brands and it'll say like customized. And so, cause he wasn't having a lot of sex because he was like, I can't find no, condoms yeah. to fit me. And so he went there. And then he, he's got to find a, a woman to fit him too. <laughs> Why set vagina? That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Why set <said> vagina? <laughs> so, but he like gave like it, shoes. Like, hey, do you have the double wide, the EE size? <laughs> the EE size. <laughs> you have EE pussy? Is that? But you an know what though? On Tinder, I tell people all the time there is a way to tell penis size and vaginal size by hands. And face. Uh, that, yeah, I believe you put the hand on the face and you smack him in the face. I'm you pretty stupid. sure. I've fallen for that a few times. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know how they always say like, oh, look at a man's feet and it tells his dick size. It does not. It's the hands. Do tell, do tell me your theory. What it's not got? my theory. Okay. This is from the Dow. From the Dow? What's the Dow? T-A-O. The Dow. The Dow is a way of T-A-O? life. T-A-O? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And the Tower Poo? The Dow. <laughs> That's only... 
Dao I know of? The Dao is um, an ancient art. It's kind of sort of like a religion, but it's really a spiritual practice. And it's been, it, it's existed in China for centuries. But in the Dao, they believe that you can use facial masking and certain body parts to kind of guess what the genitals look like. And Taoist <laughs> matchmakers would use this like this um, modality to pair people up properly. Because when you look at the Kama Sutra, they have a classification. The Kama Sutra is India, the Tao is China. Yeah, yeah. But in like Eastern it's philosophy. It's always usually like in proportion. People right. are the same size. They're not doing exactly. right in the North Face where he disappears. Exactly. Time for the fan whore appreciation moment sponsored by you, the listeners. This is the part of the podcast where I like to say thank you to some of the members of our community on Patreon. Big shout out to Sean N. What's going on, Muscle Man? Keep pumping that iron and keep supporting the show. Chris W., longtime fan whore, longtime patron. I want to thank you for your constant support and thanks for uh, saying hey every once in a while. Shout out to a newer fan whore, Russell, my, uh, my, my silent partner. Because, well, you've mostly remained silent. And uh, I, I take that as a sign of strength. Thank you for your pledge, dude. Uh, Brent, Brent, baby, uh, joins, signs up for a dollar. By the time I email him to say thank you, he already raises it to five. What a guy. Thank you, buddy. And finally, uh, Ashley H., my top patron. She's a she's on straight up sugar mama status. Thank you so much uh, for supporting the podcast at such a generous level. And you too can join our community of fan whores on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. You get a lot of great perks like bonus episodes of the Man Whore Podcast, sweet merch, and access to our super secret Facebook group, The Champagne Room. Join the club today at patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. Now let's get back to Tayomi. They, they believe that the genitals must, must match up perfectly for sex to be pleasurable for both partners. And so instead of them trying to like guess, they're like, well, let's develop this system where we can figure it out off of your face. So, if a woman has larger lips on her face, her lips down low are going to be larger. If a woman has eyes, her, her eyeballs are wetter, she's going to have a wetter pussy. Okay. And I, I, didn't, I, don't, so, I didn't make this stuff up. It is sexual reflexology. I feel like someone else made it up. <laughs> it's, sexual, it's sexual reflexology. And I, I got this book. A fan brought it for me. It's a fucking dope-ass book okay. by Mantech Chia. And I started researching. And I started doing my own research by using it on my partners. So apparently the thumb is what is an indication of penis size. Okay. Right? Do tell. So one day I, and it's, it's more so like the shape in the, in the width mm -hmm. and somewhat of the length. Like, so one day. So like how big is your <coughs> dick uh, based off your thumb? No, <laughs> uh, no but so what, what, the, what part of the, th so what is the, 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 what's the, the equation? The entire thumb. So like, Okay, if a guy has a short, fat thumb, his penis is short and fat. Okay. If he has a long, narrow thumb, it's long and narrow. Like, so I tested it out. One of my lovers one time, he got an erection. I said, hey, put your thumb next to your dick. I was like, now look at it. I was like, do you notice how your thumb looks like your penis? And he was like, what the fuck? What's the <laughs> face part? Um, you say can you use face or not? I forget, but like literally, it's eyes, eyebrows, nose, cheekbones, lips. Okay. And, and forehead. So, so what? What do you? Here's my thumb. What? What? Are, what are we predicting based off this? Average size. Average size girth. A average average length and girthy. She's not wrong. <laughs> I don't want to believe her either. Everybody. <laughs> it's not wrong. An average is 5.5 .5 to 6 inches. And I have to let this be Six known. on the nose. See? <laughs> Boom. I don't see. It's right. But I'm going to tell you something. I got to say this. Men need to realize like being average is perfect. Yeah. If you have an average size penis, you fit most vaginas. Yeah. 
So stop freaking if you out, want, dude. If you want to be quote unquote big, like seven is like the good big. Seven is like the good big. Se- seven, you know, it's just above, it's it's enough above average to be big, yep. but it's also manageable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you said that. Oh, yeah. And I'm so glad that you're a man that knows that because it's the most commonly asked question and men are so hung up on it. How big does it need to be? I don't yeah. know. How big does it need to be? It, How big is a big penis to you? And I'm like, so does this carrot look bigger than this carrot? You know what I'm saying? Like, I want the carrot that tastes better. I don't even like carrots. And I know that. I, and I, but I do know that if I did like carrots, I want the carrot that, that tastes better and that like exactly. cares about me. And I tell men all the time, I'm like, if you had a 10 inch wang today, would you know how to use it? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, so how about you stop complaining about what you feel you lack and start learning how to use what you have because it's Give someone not, an assault rifle. They don't know how to work no, it. They, they kick don't. back and they, they kick back. Yeah. will Knock their teeth. Yeah. Out. And they have no idea. And the thing is, it's like as women, we're attracted to, we're not like men where aesthetically you see big tits. You're like, Oh my God, those tits look awesome. Big ass. Oh my God, that ass looks awesome because you're equating it to fertility. Right. Mm-hmm. And, but with us, we don't look at a big dick. Most of us don't look at a big dick and think, Oh my God, I so want that. Especially when it's like attached to a stranger. You get a random floating stranger danger dick in your inbox. You don't think, oh man, that looks so good. I want to fuck this dude right now. Because we actually determine who we want to have sex with based on more factors than just aesthetics. So it's, do I have an, an emotional connection to this person? If I so happen to get pregnant by this person, can he provide? That's why so many women are like, what do you do for a living? It's one of like those getting to know you questions because there's a possibility that pregnancy could happen if you're having sex, especially if you're having it unprotected, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I like to think in 2017, that's becoming a little bit less of like the reasoning um, that that there are plenty of women who are not, they're not asking it to know if he can provide because they're like, well, I can provide for my damn self. And well, no, that instinctually as, as a potential mother, you're Mm -hmm. always thinking about, can the man that's the father of my child provide for us? Yeah, women today in 2017 are independent, but even the most independent woman still has struggles being a single mother. Like my best friend is a single mother, you know? And yeah, she's always been like an independent woman, but she's struggling and still needs help. You Mm. know what I'm saying? So like even the most independent of women still needs that support, if not financially, emotionally to raise a child. Because we all know like when you have a broken parental unit, it does have an emotional effect on a person down the line, Mm. which goes right back to what we talked about earlier, right? About how women have all these compacted issues on top of their sexuality that's causing them not to be able to like enjoy it much. You have a a woman that has daddy issues, right? Can't have like, can't make a commitment because daddy's never been there. So it's hard for her to like really get into sex. Most women aren't even having orgasms when they have sex. And then men get frustrated because they're like, well, I just don't know what to do. Well, but maybe she's broken. It's like, well, yeah, she is broken. As a person, yeah. you know, her pussy's not broken. She's broken as a person. And it takes more than you just wanting to fuck on her for her to get out of that space. That's why, like, for me, I'm like, oh, recreational sex, it's cool for a moment in time. But at some point, like, you need a deeper connection. Mm. Because you just don't want... Personally, I personally just don't want to have that, like, one and done. In my early 20s, that was cool. Now that I'm moving into my 30s, I'm like... Yeah, you know what? I need more substance. Well, yeah, but it also sounds like you're looking for like a more serious relationship. You know, yeah, not and, everyone's always in that spot. But, no, and not, but, and everyone's not going to reach that spot ever. Like there are some people who yeah. are okay with having casual relationships for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. Me, not so much. Like you I want, do want to be a mom and a wife eventually. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like, eh. At some point, you gotta like keep your energy to yourself and like stop collecting all these spirits because as women, we are receptacles, right? We have to be entered into you. You just call come a spirit. Yeah, I know what it you is mean. A spirit. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But it's fun for me to be like that. Jizz was my spirit. It was, <laughs> and we're sucking the soul out of you when you want to swallow. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Millions of life-bearing spermatozoites <laughs> are going into our bodies, and sperm, uh, not sperm, semen travels at a speed of, th- of I think. 19 miles an hour when it comes out of the body 
So imagine how much energy and force has to go into you ejaculating and then how much of your life force energy is coming out of you through your semen. So, so basically women are dementors. Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> we're sucking the souls out of you and bit by bit. Every time you ejaculate, you're losing your life bit by bit. Just know that. <laughs> That's why like, I get a lot of questions. I really get this question, uh-huh. and it's typically from guys from India, and I understand why. They ask, is it okay to eat their own semen? And I'm like, as long as it's not diseased, yeah. But there is a theory that... No life force shall be lost. So if they decide to ejaculate, then they'll take that life force energy and put it right back into themselves instead of... There's some poor boy in India being like, he came on the floor. He's like, oh no, no, I've got (laughs) to look this up or I'm going to be less of a person. (laughs) Hey, like... But I don't think my the, soul tastes terrible. But I don't think that the people who've been asking me that think of it that way. I think they just have like a fetish or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I'm not judging that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I always think about it. I'm like, guys are like, oh, I don't want to eat my own cum. I'm like, but you want us to swallow it though. Mm. And you always, you're always giving us. To, it's good for you. It has well, protein. To be fair, I don't want to eat my own cum, but like, I will swallow her cum. As well. Like, I was like, I will trade that off. But you know what, though? Think about it. It's like a yin-yang, right? Yeah. It's a complete cycle. So if she's swallowing you and you're swallowing her, there is nothing wasted. It's recycled. Man, you're really into the spirituality element of Heck sex. Heck yeah. But that's, but that's the other aspect that we don't talk about often. But that was we that try al- to negate. Were you always into that? Or was yeah. that like later, like from 15 when you started reading about sex? Or was that like maybe later on when you read like a Tao book, your Tao Poo really like turned you on and you were yeah. like, what's more here? Like when I first started, when I first started studying sexuality, it was mainly the phys- like the biological aspect. And then when I started having sex, it was the pleasure aspect. And then as I got deeper into my own spirituality, I started looking into <laughs> the spiritual aspect of sex because I've always known that it's a shift of energy. You're exchanging energy whether you're conscious of it or Mm. not. And what's interesting is that people will wake up, like you'll wake up one day and you'll be feeling aggy and you're like, why the fuck am I feeling this way? And it really could be that someone you recently had sex with was having a fucked up day and you're feeling them because their energy is still a part of your energy. I'm so sorry to every woman I made depressed because she (laughs) fucked me and I was just in a bad mood. Thank you for apologizing. (laughs) I'm so sorry to everyone. (laughs) Because it happens. Like, have you ever, like, someone popped up into your consciousness and then they popped up, like, you ran to them on the street or they text you or hit you up on Facebook or whatever? That's because you're connected with them energetically and if you don't, like, sever those ties, they will always be connected with you. What's interesting is like you you first interested in sex to be like, how do I, I'm not having it, how do I have it? Then you started having, you were like, well, how do I make it good? And then once you got good at it, you were like, how can I make this more fulfilling? You know what? When I first started studying it, it wasn't even about how I could have it. It was more so like, how, like, because I started watching Cinemax, right? Sure. At like eight. And so at 15, it was like, I want to understand the biological mechanics behind sexuality because I was studying to be a doctor. At the Ooh, time. Okay. You know, and then I switched to fat. Like, there were three Wait, things. did you also want to be a model? Was it one of those, like, yep. high school things? So, okay, like, look. I'm going to be like, a model and a doctor, and yep. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to say the three things I want to be. Sure. Fashion designer slash model, um, a cardiovascular... A pediatric cardiovascular surgeon, and a music producer. Because, like... I used to get down on the keys. Like, I'm rusty now. I just got to, like, get back into it. I can still read music, mm-hmm. but, like... Make like music has always been my life, like saving grace. So I and you're just gonna balance all three of those like casually. You know what? I, when when I was a kid, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to be a lawyer. Me too. And I wanted to be the starting center for the New York Jets. Oh. So I like I was just like, yeah, no, I'm gonna be a center, but like all, during the off season, I'll take cases. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> like those unrealistic child yes. amalgamation careers. I really tried to rationalize it all, but then I was like, okay, you know what? I can't do it all, so choose one. So I chose fashion because mm. like I was sitting in um. And my guidance counselor's office one day and they had um, this girl who was in her residency come in and she started talking about her experience. And then when I asked her about my very specific field, pediatric cardiovascular surgery, she basically told me that I was going to be in school for 10 years after undergrad. And I was like, fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, my God. That, that's how I was with loss. Uh, I saw Legally Blonde 2. <laughs> that movie Le- legally blonde i was still like yeah i'm still in for law uh, right. legally blonde Not too two. <laughs> she has like she goes to the supreme court or something and she has to write these long briefs i was like wait you have to write papers like i can't yep. 
after school, you still have to write. Like, you can't yep. just research and show up and argue. Nope. And, I, and so at 15, that's when I called it. Legally blind. That's, Legally and that's blind why too. sequels are terrible. Stop making them. Oh. They kill <laughs> dreams. They still kill dreams. <laughs> they killed my dreams. But you know what, though? You wouldn't be here with the man who are podcast if that's, you had to write briefs. You know what I'm saying? That is right. That is this right. This life is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. You are so much fun. Um, do you care to talk a little bit longer? Do a little bit like a bonus episode? Are you cool with sure, that? I'm cool with that. All right. Well, for now, let's do, uh, let's, yeah, um, let's do your plug. Like, where can people find you? You're everywhere, apparently. Uh, yeah. Except Facebook, because apparently, fuck Facebook. Fuck Facebook. <laughs> Like, cause I don't even know if I have a page anymore or not, because right. I'm like locked out. But you can find me on Snapchat, Glamazon Tayomi. You can find me on Twitter, Glamazon Tayomi. You can find me on Instagram, the Glamazon Tayomi. And YouTube, youtube.com slash glam erotica 101. You can check out my sex education blog. Yes, the girl in the photos in the sex positions is me. Um, my blog is glam erotica 101.com. Mm-hmm. And my website is sexperttayomi.com. And you can pretty much like find out my tour schedule, when I'm going to be going next. And if you want to see her get spanked, if you want to see her Heck asshole yeah. in London, apparently. Yeah, I mean, and I have a private Snapchat where I give like more explicit examples of sex education and just like just sex education in general, where if, if people want to like write me and get advice, this is where I advise them. I've kind of like pulled back on like putting so much out publicly but you got to go to my store glamazontayomi.com to like access that for life like i literally like the butt plug situation i did it you did on, it on snapchat. snapchat yeah for the people who pay for that yep guys you got to sign up for patreon because like i yeah. i'll show you guys my butt plug situation if you want <laughs> <laughs> i finally got the big one in finally thank you so much uh for chatting with me and and petting the cat cat's <laughs> been very well behaved around you yes i love it uh, well, feel free to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> yeah, guys. You know, it's been great talking to you. You know, I love doing interviews and podcasts. Hey, if you're a person that's listening, you have a podcast yourself or a radio show and you want to talk some sex positive shit on the real, hit me up on social media or you can email me, Tayomi at sexperttayomi.com. And of course, follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, fuck Facebook, <laughs> uh, YouTube, <laughs> Periscope. Follow me everywhere or just Google my name, Glamazon Tayomi. You can find everything. Later, everybody. See ya. Be sure to check out Tayomi on all the places, YouTube, all the social media. Seriously, uh, the, the woman's got all the social media and they're all at Glamazon Tayomi. Except Instagram, which is at the Glamazon Tayomi. Which, by the way, uh, you can thank Tayomi for me being on Instagram. She's the one who bullied me into it. She's also the brilliant person who told me to get an intern. I am, of course, on Instagram and Twitter at the Billy Presida. Give us a shout out. Use the hashtag Man or Podcast to let us know what you thought about the show. I promised you all some fact checking. At one point in the episode, Tayomi references that nearly 50% of Americans are living with HIV. That was inaccurate. Uh, The actual number is that under 1% of people in the United States are currently living with HIV. So, you know, don't freak out. If any of you were like, holy shit, uh, it was a little inflated. (laughs) I also uh, referenced the wonderful Guttmacher Institute uh, in regards to the laws on sex education in this country. I think I said... 33 states do not require sex education to be, quote, medically accurate. Uh, Actually, the number is 37 states. Yes, it's even worse than I had first said. Uh, Yes, only 13 states in the country require that instruction be medically accurate. Only 24 states require sex education at all. Uh, I will put a link in the show notes to the Guttmacher Institute's always up-to-date numbers on the status of sex education in this country. I hope you all start uh, planning and making travel arrangements for Man Whore Con. Early bird tickets are going to be available as soon as next week. And there's going to be a special deal for my community of fan whores on Patreon. So be sure to join the club today at patreon.com slash man podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash 
Man Whore Podcast. Next week, we're going to walk down memory lane with someone I did a wild stranger play scenario with. Um, Really fun talk. Chatting with my old pal, Jesse. But until next week, stay slutty.